Science is cool. Sure, if you're anything like us, you're not smart enough to work in it or anything. We struggled to pass high school biology and had to pray for a kind professor, a generous curve, and a pass-fail declaration to pass our college science requirements. But the knowledge that's born out of scientific discovery quite literally helps us understand what makes our world go round. The modern advanced society that we all know and love wouldn't be here without the technological advancements that have come from our knowledge of science as a discipline. So let's do a little bit of a touchdown dance for science today. In this list, we'll cover 10 fascinating scientific facts that don't seem real, but are. These 10 facts are true and verifiable, and even though it seems insane to consider them as being legit, they are. Enjoy! Heavy skies. How much does a cloud weigh? They float up there so harmlessly high in the sky and they appear as though they could just be blown away with a big deep breath, if only you could get up there to do it. And when fog and low, wispy clouds make it to eye level, they waft along smoothly through the air. So a cloud must weigh nearly nothing, right? Wrong. Way, way wrong. In actuality, a cloud weighs around a million tons. It varies a little bit depending on the size of the cloud, but there are of course some that are massive and surprisingly heavy. The average cloud has a volume north of one cubic kilometer, and a density of about 1.003 kilograms per cubic meter. That density is important because it's about 0.4% lower than the surrounding air. That's why they can float so effortlessly high in the sky, but they are still incredibly heavy. They look like puffs of smoke from down here, but they are very much not. Brains eating brains. There's a fascinating process where living cells in certain parts of the human body ingest or engulf other cells or particles. It's called phagocytosis. This process is completely normal. In many cases, the phagocyte involved is a single-celled organism, often an amoeba, or one of the body's white blood cells. Their job is to eliminate dead or underperforming cells, enhancing overall bodily function. Interestingly, phagocytosis is quite common in the brain. Yep, your brain regularly consumes and removes small chunks of its own cells to refresh itself. This process, far from concerning, is essential for the brain's maintenance and optimal function. It's akin to giving your car a tune-up, but for your brain, self-cannibalization in a beneficial way. Science is indeed strange and wonderful. However, there's a caveat to this process. Chronic sleep deprivation can accelerate phagocytosis in the brain, leading to excessive self-consumption of cells, which can be unhealthy. Generally, though, the brain's periodic cleaning up helps preserve its grey matter and ensures it continues to operate efficiently. No head? No problem! The phrase, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, is known the world over, or at least in the Anglosphere. Still, just as with any crazy phrase like that, it actually comes from a place of truth. As many know, chickens can live for a while, like minutes, with their heads cut off. But did you know that one chicken in the 1940s in the United States lived for a whopping 18 months without a head? The chicken's name was Mike, and it made its home in Colorado. Poor Mike was almost completely beheaded with an axe, but the jugular vein and most of the brain stem were left intact. Because of that, he was able to hang out and go on living with just enough of his brain remaining to perform his most essential functions. The farmer who owned him was so impressed with Mike's ability to show resilience that he opted to feed Mike with an eyedropper through the stump of his neck. That sounds absolutely gross and a little bit sad, but it worked for a year and a half. Tied down. If your dad ever insisted on you wearing a tie to church or taught you how to tie one for formal events, you might want to share this with him. It turns out wearing a tie can reduce blood flow to your brain by nearly 10%. According to a recent study, the average necktie, as worn today, often decreases blood flow to the brain by around 7.5%. This reduced blood flow can lead to dizziness, nausea and headaches. Tight ties can even increase pressure on the eyes. Moreover, ties can harbour more germs than regular clothing because they're often worn for years without washing or dry cleaning. So, Dad, next time you think about tying a tie, consider the potential downsides. It's not just about style. It could affect your health, too. Shorten up. Are you hesitant about using long words? Well, we weren't, until we discovered that fear of them is an actual documented condition with a fascinating name. 
Hippopotamonstroses equiptaleophobia. Yes, that's a whopping 36 letters. If you suspect someone must have played a prank with such a ridiculously long word and its ironic meaning, you'd be correct. The first known use of this 36-letter word to describe the fear of lengthy words was credited to the Roman poet Horace in the 1st century BC. He employed it to criticize writers who excessively used long words to flaunt their intelligence, advocating instead for clarity in expression. Not a bad perspective. Fast forward to 2000 when American poet Amy Netsu Kamatathil revitalized the term, possibly inspired by her own extensive surname, to represent the fear of long words as we understand it today. A strategic move indeed. Good old pets. The oldest dog on record whose age was verified was Bluey, an Australian cattle dog who lived an incredible 29 years. Bluey spent his life as a working dog on a farm in Australia known for his skill and loyalty. He continued working until his late 20s and then enjoyed a few more years of retirement before passing away in 1939, securing his place in the record books. In 2023, Bluey's record briefly faced a challenge from a Brazilian dog named Bobby, reportedly 31 years old. However, Guinness World Records suspended Bobby's claim in January 2024 due to doubts about its legitimacy. Cats can also achieve impressive lifespans. Typically, a healthy indoor cat can live around 15 to 20 years, but the oldest recorded cat, Cream Puff, shattered expectations. Born in Texas in 1967, Cream Puff lived an astonishing 38 years and three days, passing away in 2005. Interestingly, Cream Puff's owner, Jake Perry, previously owned another record-breaking cat named Grandpa Rex Allen. Jake Perry's unique knack for extending his pet's lives left many wondering what was his secret. Seeing Red The former professional baseball-slash-football superstar Deion Sanders used to say, if you look good, you play good, and if you play good, they pay good. The media and fans alike ate that comment up and thought it was the funniest and wackiest thing. But as it turns out, Deion was dead right, and whether he knew it or not at the time that he infamously used that phrase, science actually has his back. According to a recent longitudinal study taking a deep look at all kinds of professional soccer clubs or football clubs to those not watching this in America, those who wear red jerseys consistently play better and win more. Over the last 55 years, teams wearing a red kit, as opposed to literally any other color, played significantly better in home matches than other clubs who wore other colors. What is it about red? Well, the study wasn't entirely sure about that, but whatever it was, nearly six decades of data doesn't lie. If you want your team to win, make them wear red. Chainsaws for children? It's hard to believe that we're even going to say this next sentence, but here we go. Chainsaws were invented in Scotland in the late 18th century to help as a childbirth aid. No, you're not hallucinating. Chainsaws were originally invented to speed up the process of symphysiotomy, which is a fancy medical term that means to widen the pubic cartilage. A device with a moving chain like what we know on a chainsaw turned out to be the perfect way to help women push their babies out safely and quickly. Furthermore, those primitive chainsaws also helped remove bone and disease-laden cartilage during birth. Fast forward more than 100 years from there, and suddenly chainsaws would become a key tool in the tool bag for lumberjacks, landscapers, and other outdoor workers. Of course, these new chainsaws had much more powerful motors and much larger teeth than those originally intended to help birth children. The new and much improved chainsaws would chop wood and cut down trees, and that's how they truly became popular worldwide. Just don't use these outdoor chainsaws on a woman giving birth. That would be very, very bad. Sleep signing. Just as we sometimes talk in our sleep, did you know that deaf individuals also sign in their sleep? It's logical considering sign language is their primary mode of communication, much like spoken language is for others. Since language is a constant part of daily life, it makes sense that the brain continues to use it during sleep, entering the realm of dreams. Scientists discovered this phenomenon a few years ago while studying a 71-year-old deaf man with rapid eye movement disorder. Observing his sleep patterns, they noted something intriguing. He was using fluent sign language while asleep. For sleep scientists fluent in sign language, this offered a unique window into his dreams. It's fascinating, yet also somewhat eerie. Nipped in the bud 
Do you possess a third nipple? We're not joking, we're genuinely curious. Research indicates that approximately one in every 18 people actually has a third nipple. This fact might catch you off guard. Have you ever noticed individuals with three nipples at the community pool or the beach? Probably not. Perhaps you could pay closer attention next time, but be careful not to offend anyone inadvertently. Take it a step further. Next time you're at the grocery store, consider the possibility that there are multiple individuals with more than two nipples around you. It's a bit eerie, isn't it? To clarify, the statistic of 1 in 18 doesn't always involve a conventional third nipple like the first two. In many cases, individuals with a third nipple actually have a mole somewhere on their body that technically qualifies as a nipple, even if they're unaware of it. Often this nipple mole is so inconspicuous that people go their entire lives without realizing they have this condition. Regarding a genuine typical nipple, it occurs in about 1 in every 500 people, which is still surprisingly common. And in case you're curious, having a third nipple is not a cause for alarm. There are no significant health concerns associated with it, and it's not linked to any life-threatening or frightening issues. It's merely a benign medical condition known as polythelia, resulting from a minor mutation in inactive genes before birth. That's all for today. If you found these facts as eye-opening as we did, consider subscribing to stay updated on more intriguing discoveries. Don't forget to like, share with friends who love science, and comment below with your thoughts and experiences. Let's continue exploring the wonders of science together.